Every time awesome. you come in here, my theme song comes on. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> it's so funny. Are you feeling like a woman? <laughs> I'm just tired today. So, no so two faults. But what was the history before you got uh, this see, far? Uh, All they, kinds of parts. Yeah, but they they had uh, variable valve timing, solenoid codes. They had I don't know why they did the O2 sensors. He said those were done. So what it's doing? If you start it up, it start it runs good for us minute or two and then it starts stumbling it just you know you can watch the fuel tip go super negative and then the thing stalls and i had i might have to go into my scanner if you want to see some of the other codes but i had um fuel rail pressure codes what's in there now did you clear them all i did that's okay um i'll have to get them for you there no, it's okay i mean you gave me enough info yesterday this is an o2 related problem we believe so to fill you guys in when he told me that, you saw one nine on the scanner, our first thoughts were wideband. And then I said to Danner, I said, I've never seen the, a wideband on the GMs. And I looked up some service info and sure enough, it's not a wideband. This is a this is a narrow band Zirconia okay. O2, yeah. just like every other O2 they've used. Okay. You saw 1.9 on the rear O2 as well. Both of them have the 1.92. And, and then when you start it, they start going down and the rear one went into range and the the front one never did, it just kept, like I said, it just started pulling so much fuel out, it stalled. I thought he said he cleared these codes. I, I do have uh, some camshaft actuator codes. Valve control circuit on both of those, the 10, P0010, the P0013, heater circuit, he had the O2 unplugged, so the 30 code, just kind of ignore that for now, engine temp sensor circuit high, so that is all it looks like. Bad ground stuff. Circuit high on thermistors. Bad ground all day long. All right, I'll ask him that question when he comes back. Um, I'm more focused right now on the O2 based on what my brother saw. So let's go to that. Yeah, see, so like right off the bat, I don't like these O2 numbers. The 1.9 volts. I don't, I don't like that. that. That's suggesting a problem. Um, I have all kind of intake cam and yes all those codes are still here well you cleared them it was some kind of i have an well, ect circuit well, high code I, too. I had grounds unplugged when yeah. I, I i loosened the ground and the computer shut down i mean you okay. might just need to start fresh okay but we had a 2646 which is a honda code i see them for their um cylinder variable uh valve like actually it's it's uh it's when they shut three cylinders off. Yeah. But I had uh, that code too. That had to do, I don't know if it's a valve pause system or how they describe it. I've never seen it on a GM. So I, I did have something with that, but I don't think I don't think it was one of these. Well, I'm going to focus on the O2s. Uh, the, the fact that you had the grounds, because we spoke over the phone about these grounds and you were messing around and with And they're that, not so. where they're saying they are. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to see what this does, because I'm showing the 1.9 volt right now, and I don't like that. That, I don't think it should be that hot. So let's see what this looks like when I start it. Okay. What'd you have unplugged? Hmm. Nothing, just the oxygen sensor. Let me clear these faults that are in there. And then I'm gonna reread them. I honestly don't know if it had a I have an intake. Cam, yeah, these all came back immediately. Right? Key on. Intake cam position. Oh, wait. Valve circuit. How about circuit. If I do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you catch that, Caleb? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got the old trim going there? Yeah. Oh, the upstream uh, dropping drastically. That's what we want to see when the heater's acting. It looks like they're delaying the downstream. I know the upstream is, is new. Right now my short term is positive 20, 26. You mentioned the positive number. 
it was going negative. But I mean, you mentioned after it started working on yeah. you, a positive number. So that's maybe a separate issue altogether. This isn't what our problem is, though. Like our positive number here isn't the complaint. The complaint is it's, it's stalling. St it's stalling and starving for fuel. And you watch the fuel trim go very, very negative. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. It looks like we have a lean condition too. In addition, but uh, I want to watch this for a minute to see what it does. You said you got it to do it again yesterday, right? I was just looking at that at that voltage. I'm not sure after I unplugged it if I ran it long enough to make it start doing its thing. I hope it does it for you. It's weird how drastic the short-term trims are. Like there's a there's a two, and then it's going back to twenty. You see that? I did not. Look at the look at the short term trim. Oh, like, okay. like the what it's like that swing is huge. Normally you you only see like a five percent swing, not a twenty percent swing. You know, short term looks pretty pretty decent. Now once it's warmed up, the long term's gone a little positive. Let's do a couple brake torques. See if I get some engine movement here and uh, try to duplicate this. I'm just doing a uh, one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas just to get a little bit of engine torque while I'm watching these signals. Go reverse, do the same thing, make the engine torque the other way. There's a misfire right there. Definitely secondary ignition related. Hear that? That's a bad miss. Fire code in there too. That's that one's that's bad. See the cat warmed up, so we have less frequent signals. Um, we we have a lean condition, positive 19% on the long term, um, but that's not our main problem. We have a misfire. I can feel, but what, from what Danner was telling me, he saw very very high voltage on the upstream O2 that I'm not seeing now, and we want to try to duplicate that. And I think really a test drive is probably in order here. Okay, let me exit out of here and I can probably show you guys. I felt the misfire, just right there. Right there, I felt it again. Why it wouldn't be showing me anything in history, it should be. Cylinder three. But we need to test drive this. That's, that's the plan. You can stay here. I'm going to put the car down, close the hood. We're going to go test drive. All right. Um, Dan and I were talking while I was taking this off the rack. And uh, what he had told me is they noticed the misfire codes yesterday. But uh, they also were concerned. Uh, this is a GDI system. And uh, they were concerned about maybe an injector. And they were looking at fuel rail pressure. And fuel rail pressure held. In fact, it climbed on shutdown which is good that's what you want on a hot engine and uh, uh, he, he was checking that because they had some fuel rail pressure GDI related codes too um, but this thing had codes everywhere so uh, that's that's the recap Caleb asked me to recap that because he was playing around with his camera and not on us but that's okay so um, I'm just gonna test drive it I really want to focus on the O2s I know we have a lot of things going on here with this car but I, I, I want to focus on the O2s because of what my brother saw. He saw very, very negative fuel trims and he saw the O2, the upstream O2 with very high voltage during that time, like like higher than normal, like 1.5 volts. And, and the 1.9 we saw cold engine may be a normal bias on this year. I'm not totally sure. I need to see this thing do what my brother saw. Kind of watch the bank 102, the bank 202, short term and long term. Their their main complaint, Danner, is it's stalling. Is stalling problems. Okay. What are you showing me? Just the code list. This is beforehand. There's O2, low voltage on sensor two. Uh, this is when he got the car before he did and did anything. He got a catalyst code. Uh, post cat fuel trim system high limit. It says downstream O2 fuel control. 
might. Does it? I don't know. That code said postcat. Fuel pressure regulator one control performance. Intake rocker arm solenoid valve one stuck off. And then a bunch of stuff in the ABS, a bunch of stuff in the BCM. Cylinder three misfire. This is the OBD two codes. Catalyst efficiency, post cap fuel trim, system two rich bank one. Regulator A, rocker arm, okay. Yeah. Uh, it is possible by Danner loosening and tightening that ground that he may have fixed the problem that I'm suspecting he had. The main problem, which is this O2 bias being too high, fooling the computer into thinking it's really rich and taking all the fuel away, and that was causing the stalling. Right there, bad miss. Real bad miss right there. Wow. See the O2s go real lean. That's typical when you have a misfire. Oxygen sensors going lean. Remember that um, oxygen sensors, you know, are affected by misfires in, in that um, there's extra oxygen going into the exhaust with that misfire, along with unburned fuel, and it will drive, misfires will drive an O2 lean, the ignition ones. Bad miss. Bad miss. It's the whole time O2s were lean during that event absolutely feels like a secondary ignition problem. Whoa, that was real. Did you feel that? It felt like rumble strips. It felt like more than a single cylinder. I want to pull up my misfire data. I'll pull over so I can change my data list. These intermittent ones are tough, man. I'm not seeing what my brother saw. Unfortunately, he may, he may have fixed it with the computer ground. All we're dealing with now is just a a simple misfire and uh, a little bit of a lean condition too. Let's see what this looks like at a higher RPM. I'm looking at short term and long term here. This is now, you guys are gonna hear this, that's it. There's 2,500 RPM. Long term is learning. Bringing the short term down. Yeah, it's not bad, like 10%. Total trim, looking at both together. Let's let this idle now. I felt the misfire right there, so that's gonna skew these numbers a little bit. Our total trim at idle is around 20%. See this long term is gonna climb. Short term is gonna come down closer to zero here. Just felt a misfire, that's gonna change things a little bit. You can see why the cat is setting a code. Look at that downstream O2, HO2S2, that is, uh, too frequent for for the amount of driving that we've done and running also with a misfire yeah that cat's just done yeah so this is classic vacuum leak type scenario as far as this lean condition goes right here right now we're not misfiring see we're around close to 20 percent on the long term 18 we're showing and when i raise the rpm i'm now at uh, around 2500 again about 10%, but we're not really here for that. that. That's a problem, that's not the problem. That's not gonna make the engine stall. Engine stalling is the customer's main complaint. Um, I'm not seeing the oxygen sensor scenario that my brother was, was referring to. With this misfire data, we're gonna go drive it again, and we'll focus on the counters. Cylinder three, you can see. History shown 730 misfires on that. Right there, real bad, real bad. Cylinder three. Yeah. You get a car like this with that many trouble codes, it comes in 200,000 miles. You better be communicating with your customer about what you're doing. Because you're not going to fix all the problems with this car in one shot you're just not people tend to drive their cars for a really long time with a check engine light on and um, it's not a one i've said this so many times it's not a one diagnostic fee to fix all your problems that you've had for years we our job as technicians is to to well number one communication with your customers key 
let them know what you're doing, how you're approaching your diagnosis, how you're charging for your first hour, right? I've, I've told you guys too, don't charge time for the first hour. It's, it's the same price if it's five minutes or it's 60 minutes. You wanna call it an hour diagnostic time, that's fine. Just make sure the customer is aware that they're paying the same price if it's five minutes for you to find it, okay? Um, so that's one. The, the second one is you need to fix the customer's complaint. What is the customer's complaint? Of course, he's complaining about the check engine light, but when you have like 50 trouble codes, that check engine light's been on for a while. So your job is to find out which one of those faults is actually causing the customer's symptoms. What's the customer's symptoms? A stalling problem is his main complaint. And unfortunately, I think my brother fixed that problem and we can't share that with you guys. <laughs> and he fixed it by tightening that computer ground. Some of these GMs, and I, I couldn't, I didn't see it on the diagram on this one because I looked to see if there was a separate oxygen sensor ground circuit for the ECM, but GM did that for many, many years. They used a designated ground wire that was only for the oxygen sensor signal circuit. And when that ground wire would, would corrode or break or whatever, it would only affect the oxygen sensor, not all the other components. So typically a bad computer ground would affect multiple circuits. In this case, what I'm describing, it only affects the oxygen sensor. And what my brother saw and what he was describing was exactly that. And I, I, I saw two computer grounds on the diagram and they weren't listed, of course. It didn't, didn't tell you like specifically what that ground was for, but some of the older GM diagrams did that. It would say O2S ground. I didn't see that. But we're not seeing what my brother had mentioned. We have a misfire for sure. Let me uh, pull the O2s back up again. We have a misfire, we can attack that but that's not the customer's main complaint. My brother may have already fixed the customer's main complaint. So bonus for the customer, as far as fixing multiple problems really in one fee. And these O2s look good. The cat doesn't look good because the downstream's frequent, too frequent. Um, we do have a lean condition at idle, so we need probably need a cat. 200,000 mouse, no question. The mixture is lean at idle. That's gonna give you a code, there's two. So we have some type of vacuum leak, we think. And right now we have a cylinder three misfire. And then number four is Danner fixed the stalling problem. I think he fixed it by tightening that ground. Cause it's it's not doing what he said. See what he wants us to do and, and we'll, um, We'll attack the misfire. Well, I'm getting this hood open back up. Take a look at the scan data now after the car's been idling. Look at that cat. That downstream looks just like the upstream. This cat's junk. So he needs a cat. That's gonna be one. He's got a lean condition at idle, we believe. Some kind of small vacuum leak. That's two. That still needs to be located. And then he's got a misfire. It's pretty significant. And it indicated number three on the test drive. So that's three, and then the fourth one is, I believe, again, my brother fixed the main issue by tightening up that ground. I can't make you do what you guys felt, Louie. Really? And you you drove it, right? It's, yeah, it was pretty it's, easy to do. It stalled do on anything special. And it stalled on you, like, yeah. every time you come to a stop? And pretty much, yeah. Like, was it low power, power too power. when you were driving it? When I first pulled out, you couldn't get any power. And then it stalled, started it up, and then it did it uh, right. real bad. And that misfire, I can feel that. That's a number three. And then three. it would smooth out, and then yeah. it would just smoothly stall. It's, it was it's weird. Yeah. And then initial startup after the stall, did it, it, it seemed to be okay for a second yeah. or two, and then... And then, then it, if you didn't do anything, it would start to act up again. That's like exactly we O2. It would pull fuel. And yeah, then. and that's exactly O2 related, because on startup, we're not using the oxygen sensor, even when it's hot. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, misfire-wise, I don't know if I can get a good signal on these or not. We can try. Um, I need to grab 
my secondary ignition adapters, typically these these coil designs, I've not been able to get good signals on them. That's a four wire, so the the transistor's inside of them, and it's been really difficult to get decent signals. Um, let me, I'm gonna run out to the truck and see what I have. Got my Wise probe. This is from my friends at AES Wave. I've had this forever. Yeah, you uh, definitely need a cat, and I, you can see that downstream mode too. Um, it has a lean condition at idle, so we're looking for a small vacuum leak. So I raise the RPM, it improves. It goes from 20% to 10%. I'm going after the misfire because I can feel that. I can duplicate it on the road, number three cylinder, that's what we're doing now, and I cannot make it do what you said. I think you you may have fixed it. So there's you more. said dripping on that rear um, route, too. It was wet, but cold. You know, but I was hoping, I. But you said it still acted up when you were done, I thought, after you tightened that. Are you, you never plugged the O2 back in, but didn't you just say that it was still doing it? Or you were just going by voltage levels unplugged? After you fixed that ground. After we never really fixed anything. I, mean, I just loosened it and then stalled the car and tightened it back up. But I, so the car stalled when you loosened that ground? Yeah. You had it run. You set all those codes, you know what I mean? And, okay. Well, no, we weren't even running. It was just key on okay. looking at the voltage. And then I heard a, the throttle body, and then it shut off, lost communication, you know. Um, but I don't know. I'd like, if you have, did you capture some of that data? Do you have it? I'd like to see it. Yeah. I just want to see what I'm seeing here. Because I had, I had 2.8 volts unplugged though, yes? I mean, they might be using a bias on the ground. And I've seen that. If you're seeing 2.8 volts like on the sensor ground, that may be normal. Some oxygen sensors do that. Chrysler did that. They ran a 2.5 volt bias on the ground of the O2. Yes, yeah, yeah. See, I'm seeing like 2 volts. That's on the sensor ground? That, I think the signal line. And the sensor ground is ah. one ball. Okay. So, so, so you're seeing 1.9 on the signal and one ball on the ground. Yeah. That's it's the difference in potential, and they, they do that to eliminate noise. So you're you're reading, if you look at that number right there, that's your O2 signal. Like ignore the see the 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0, 0.7. Yeah. That's your O2 moving up and down. Go to the sensor ground now and you'll you'll see those are normal. This is gonna be a normal yeah, one volt on the sensor ground and see all the hash. So the difference in potential between the two is the O2 signal. So rather than going battery ground, you got another lead I can back probe the ground or the, and we'll go between the two and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that's a, a one volt bias that they're using on the sensor ground that I'm gonna call that normal. Can you put that on my other, on the other wire? We could have shown you guys this on the Vantage too. It just, I'm glad Danner's doing this because it kind of scratches an itch. Um, we're just backwards on our polarity. Let me just switch these here. Because we went positive to the ground. And then that's your O2. That's, this is what the computer sees. And let's change this voltage. Go to... Right, there's your normal looking O2. Now it has some hash in it, but normal looking O2 up and down rich lean, that is absolutely, I'm calling that normal. Because I've seen it, I have it actually, it's in, it's in my book, chapter four, chapter five material, O2 bias ground. And they did that to pull the O2 signal wire up off of zero. So if we, so we got engine block noise and whatever, if we pull that up off, the computer's looking between the two and it seems normal. That's why spin tool, like that looks great. You know, that's live. That looks great right there. I just wanted to show this without, we had, we were using the graphing meter and there was some stuff in there that really was showing you more hash than was actually in that signal. And there's your O2. You're at idle, and that's exactly what we're seeing on the scan tool. Yeah, I wasn't seeing that. That's what sucks. I was seeing well above the But you saw that. You saw that on scan data. You saw well above the bolt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then when you come on here and start doing some pinpoint checks, that stuff's going to throw you off. 
Well, I kind of figured the 1.9 I was seeing when I saw 2.8 and 1.0, yeah. I was at my 1.9-ish, but it never came down below. Well, yeah, and then it started pulling fuel away, and then it shut off, and I, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if me touching that ground had something to do with it. And that's a new O2? That's a new O2. And that problem was there before you changed the O2? Because you can have, here's what can happen. You can have an O2 that's faulty, and that we're gonna call that 1.9 volt bias normal on this design. I'm gonna call that normal. Uh, after seeing the sensor ground using a bias on it. Um, but you can have an O2 signal, an O2 itself that's messed up, that it never warms up in that bias. 1.9 stays high and the computer thinks it's a rich condition pulls fuel away so we could legit have a faulty upstream o2 but if he's had this problem before the o2 and after the o2 then no and this is where communication's key i just really to... feel like it the only thing i can do at this point is yeah. attack this missile I'm sorry, no it's fine we yeah. this actually gave us a good opportunity because we have people asking us all the time how do we build how do we approach things how, and so all of this was good for us from that standpoint. Yeah, I, I hate accidentally fixing something. That's what it was we always had was. Good, oh, we had good oh, direction. Uh, Let's just see if I can pick this misfire up and then maybe we'll drive it one more time and, and see if we yeah, can make it do it. Just give it back to him and let him try it again. Because right? when it was stolen like that, when I unplugged the front O2 sensor, it stayed at the 1.9. Which it would. And unplugged. the rear one kept dropping and dropping and then it went all the way down to point zero three, which is probably your lean issue. But you said unplugged upstream. Unplugged up, and it, then it quit stalling after right. that because it stayed in open loop, right. you know? So, yeah. These are tough, man. When you deal with intermittents like this, you know, it's very difficult to, um, you know, give a customer like, here's what your problem is. You know, we can tell the customer what we saw, what we did, and what we're suggesting as far as the misfire goes, as far as the cat goes, as far as the lean condition goes, but leave the question mark with the O2. Like we, we my, what my brother saw was an oxygen sensor slash circuit related problem that we're now not seeing. You gotta leave that open. You have to leave that open. And it, this isn't one where the customer gets a freebie because we're unsure. You go no, to the, I'm at least getting an hour. Yeah, you go to the doctor and they do all kind of tests and stuff and they'll find something like hard evidence based on the symptom they don't say well that's okay no charge yeah <laughs> come on man work come for on. free yeah. all right what are you doing i'm just seeing if i can even get a signal i don't anticipate that i'm going to be able to we may we may play um as eric o says swap tronics in other words i may move just move this coil to the, a different cylinder and see if we can make it move because i can't I can't really get a good signal here. That's typical of a four wire coil over plug. And there's your O2 signal again. Guys, if, if you have questions on what we're talking about here with this O2 with a uh, one volt bias on the sensor ground, I have some great, great lectures on this. Um, again, I told my brother and I told you guys if you picked it up, this, is, this would be in chapter four and five playlist on my premium channel where I'm sitting in my class and I'm describing these conditions and these faults and, and these systems in, in ways that you'll be able to understand it better and it won't throw you for a loop like you can see it can. So hugely important subject, Scanner Danner Premium, it's still 11 bucks a month, access to 500 hours of training foundational stuff that holds the test of time. Uh, shut this off. And I'm just gonna pull that coil out and we're gonna swap it around. That tab was broken on that coil too. You see that? Locking tab. It's like someone's been here. Swap three or four. You know, we could have a bad plug too. We'll swap the coils first. We should be able to do a brake torque and not even have to drive it, proof it. You know, when it's right here in the open, it's real simple to do. Oh, we got some oil in there too. So that would be from a leaking valve cover gasket. 
So he's going to need a valve cover gasket too, and that that can mess the coil up. And then when you see the, the white powder, may or may not be an issue. Um, sometimes that white powder inside can be a carbon track. I don't know how well you're getting that. I can see it. That looks like it might be one. Let's see what this one looks like. We don't see that same white powdery substance on four. I don't really look for that as a guide. I, I look for that, like the carbon track. Um, but when you have that, when you have potential carbon tracks like that, what that ends up doing, that, that is one on the side right there. What that ends up doing is burning that track on the plug too. So when it burns that track on the plug, you put a new coil on a plug that has that track burned in it, it's gonna still misfire. So when I swap these coils, it may be a little misleading. We may end up having misfires on three and four because of the carbon track that is potentially on that plug as well. But I'm gonna put this number three in where the number four was. We'll tell Danner he needs a valve cover gasket too. And then the other thing, he's got that little bit of a lean condition too. That we don't like. And that's gonna be, you know, proceed how you guys feel fit based on the time you have involved in your initial diagnosis. Do we wanna also, you know, smoke test this intake? If we have time, I think maybe we'll do that. And include that in our initial diagnosis. A lot of this, what Caleb and I have been doing so far is teaching primarily on this channel. That's what we do. We want to teach processes, procedures, testing methods. So that takes us extra time. We understand that. And honestly, I don't charge at all for diagnostic time anymore. The camera pays me. You guys pay me when you watch. So this isn't about me trying to rip the customer off as some lay, lay person may think. This isn't about that at all. This is about me teaching the next generation of true diagnostic techs how to navigate this field. That's what we're doing. Okay, uh, let's go inside, start it up, see what we got. Unrelated to the coils, you see the upstream and downstream O2 signals. You see the downstreams at 1.7 volts. We're just gonna call that a normal bias on, the, on these. That's cold sensor will look like that. We're interested in our misfire data. And we were able to make it misfire worse in reverse, just given the throttle limitations. I can feel a miss right now. Whoa. Like it won't even rev right now. That was interesting. There we go, cylinder four. Got the real bad misfire now. We're getting some on three as well. Where's three at? Yeah. Yeah, nothing on three, this is cylinder four. So like, that's pretty easy. Definitely needs a coil that's now in the number four. So the recommendation there is one coil, all three plugs, all three, all four plugs, one coil. Warn the customer of the other coils. They, you know, I'm not saying to sell all the coils at once. Um, it doesn't need them all. If this is my car, I'm putting one coil in it, four plugs. The car's got 200,000 miles on it and suggesting the other coils is not a bad idea from that standpoint. But that'd be a suggestion, not a need. There's a difference. Talk to your customer. Let them know where you are. All right. That settles that part for me. Sorry I couldn't get the secondary waveform. You guys know what I'm talking about. These four plug and three, four pin and three pin plug uh, coils with the transistor inside. Very, very difficult to get. Going back to my fuel trim and O2s. Let's see where we are with the short term and long term at idle. Look at the 
bottom two. Add these two together for total trim. We're seeing a total trim of about, about 10%. It's interesting the long term didn't hold that memory very well but computer grounds were inter interrupted computer connector was unplugged so those things have to relearn plus and minus 10 percent is considered normal total trim we're right on that borderline that's not too bad at 2500 let's let it idle and let's watch it that one's learned and we're at 20 percent and usually anything more than like 15 16 percent is worth attacking because you'll end up getting a uh, trouble code out of it and we're sitting at 20 percent this this does to me look like some type of small vacuum leak i think this is the one with that with that goofy pcv system too where I, I need Dan, he, he's more familiar with the engine setup than I am. I don't want to get lost in this fact, in this lean condition. I feel like I can. Yes. It could also be a math issue with 200,000 miles, but it's not acting like that. Right. He's gone. Do I have access to his smoke machine? I think really, to be honest with you, the only reason that I'm doing this right now rather than passing this part off to my brother is just to show you guys that I, I, I feel like in the initial diagnosis for what we've done today, this would be something that should be included. We haven't really been working that that long. This this will put us at that hour at that hour mark for sure. If you take away all the all the gabbing, I have the gift of gab. Um, you're working in the field. And you're trying to figure out how to bill for this stuff. I want to make sure you guys have the right perspective of things. It was not hard to uh, switch this stuff over, you know, with the coils and identify that coil issue. Not hard at all. Other than that, we're just test driving. This is leaking. Ah, oh, there's a pinhole in it. Are you kidding me? Right there. This is awful. I'm handing this back to my brother. I'm gonna have him chase this idle lean condition. <laughs> We're passing this one. I'm gonna look at this mass airflow while I have this out, just to see what it looks like. This didn't have symptoms of a dirty math, but the mileage is right for it. So I'm checking it, if I can bring these numbers down you know, we were, we were lean at idle, like 20%. We were also a little lean at 2,500. And if I can bring this down 10% on both by cleaning the math, then I'm gonna call that a win. But let's look at it. Oh, there's definitely some contaminants on there, especially in the back. So what am I looking for? I don't know, I don't have my glasses on. I can't tell if that's a contaminant or not. This looks okay. But I'm gonna spray it anyway. What's he got here? Oh yeah! Some mass airflow sensor cleaner. I was gonna I was gonna say I'm using some mass airflow sensor cleaner. <laughs> but since he has some, since he has some, we'll we'll use the mass airflow sensor cleaner. Dr. Math. I, I like that. Dr. Math Fix. I know the shot was poor. No reason to show you an after one. <laughs> this isn't going to fix anything. And, and honestly, for this part, as far as the customer complaint goes, this 10% correction we're trying to get 
has nothing, nothing to do with the stalling problem that was described and the negative fuel trim numbers that was seen. My brother saw like minus 20, minus 30% on the fuel trim that was causing the stall. Vacuum leaks don't do that. A little slightly positive fuel trim numbers opposite of what he saw. This has nothing to do with the customer's complaint. I'm just trying to be a little bit thorough for the customer, for my brother, and giving them direction on where they need to go, advise them on where they need to go with this car. And I'm not chasing this any further than that. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna, uh, tell Danner what, I, what we saw, let him talk to the customer, see how they wanna proceed. Because remember, the original complaint, we never duplicated. And so we gotta leave ourselves a little bit of leeway for the return for when this car comes back, if this car comes back, if that makes sense. The other thing too, just business practice wise, you leave yourself some room and then when the car comes back, if you can figure it out right away, you've already charged them that initial diagnose, diagnostic time, you know, you may not charge them again. You know, if you can hit it right away, if you know what the problem is, you may not, you may not charge them that second time and you may, you know, keep that communication line open with your customer. Okay. Caleb asked what we're looking for, and we're looking for an improvement in our trim. So let's just watch this upstream heater working no problem. I just felt a misfire there. So we have some, again, misfiring going on that's gonna be a factor here too. I, I should say, that's pretty bad miss right now. Um, I should say to you guys um, that when we were looking at these fuel trim numbers, it was not misfiring, and that's important. Our short term went very, very negative right there. Super negative. Why? Why? What am I looking at here? There's our stall. That was our problem. Hold on a second. That's exactly where we were in my upstream O2. Look, minus 18 on the long term, and we went minus 30 on the short term. That's going to make the car stall. Upstream O2 during that time... It was not even, we weren't not even really in closed loop yet. Upstream O2 is positive, is 0 0.6. Interesting. Let's see, what was my downstream doing during that time? Yeah, look how lean the downstream is. So the blue line, look all the way to the right of the screen. During this period of time, we're minus 30, minus 16. This is the customer's complaint. I'm glad we didn't get lost in that slight lean condition because the car just stalled on me. This will make it stall. Downstream O2 is showing you a lean condition. Upstream O2 is showing us a, a, a rich condition, 0.7. Anything above 0.45 is interpreted as rich. So the computer's taking fuel away, taking fuel away, taking fuel away. This, is, this upstream O2 is junk. This is a bad upstream O2 sensor. That's what I'm seeing here. I don't know when this O2 was replaced. But here's the thing, right? The downstream O2 reading 0.16, upstream O2 reading 0.6, all the fuel being taken away, the downstream's telling you that all the fuel was indeed taken away. The reason it stalled is not from an over-fueling condition. I know some of you are maybe thinking about that. Well, what if it's over-fueling? If it's over-fueling, the downstream is also reading rich. This is not an over-fueling issue. This is a upstream O2 that has not reacted like it should have and the computer's taking fuel away and we see that on the downstream and that is why it stalled. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the data and let's watch it again. I'm not gonna hit the throttle. I no longer care about that lean condition we were chasing. Let's watch it. One, four, I feel a misfire. See that misfire can add soot to that upstream O2 as well. There we go. Look, upstream O2 is rich, taking fuel away, taking fuel away, taking fuel away, stall. Downstream O2 pegged lean. This just needs an upstream O2 sensor and a coil. That upstream O2's probably got soot all over it from this misfire. Let's watch it again. Take fuel away, take fuel away. Uh, oh, it recovered. Nope, taking fuel away again. Take fuel away, why? Because we're still above. I hear popping through the intake, confirmed lean condition, faulty, faulty upstream O2 sensor. That's 
that's awesome. How, how, that's awesome we were able to catch it. This, this is our main issue. Yeah, I can't, can't even hardly rev it. I just saw 1.4, oh yeah, this, let's see if I woke that O2 back up. I did, kind of. Weird that I couldn't get that to really show itself on the road. Let's see what our total trims look like now. That O2 looks pretty good. Total trim at 2,500. It's about the same. 8% long term. 9% long term. So total trim is about the same at 25. We did nothing with cleaning that math. Let's see what it looks like at idle. Yeah, we didn't we didn't fix anything with the with the idle lean condition. That's still there. I know you guys aren't aren't gonna really like the fact that I'm calling an O2 either when you see a signal that looks that good. But I, I believe the problem is is this sensor is not being active fast enough. And that misfire from that coil, I believe, has contaminated that O2. Or it's an aftermarket O2 and it's just not meeting those same conditions. So I'm going to tell Danner that we want to put an oxygen sensor in this, as well as one coil and all the spark plugs. Tell the customer about the lean condition. He's got other issues. Tell the customer about the cat. Communication's key. From the left here, um, in, in this area, as was before we shut the car off, did the smoke test. So all of this in here is the O2's cooling off. I still had the key on. You see the voltage rising. That's our bias voltage as it's cooled off. And then we start the car here. And we see that, we see that um, signal change very quickly, which tells you the heater circuit's working fine. And then, where's my, I need to pull my engine RPM in here too. Let's see where the car stalled. Engine speed. So the car stalled here. Yeah, my upstream O2 just never dropped below like 0.6. And that caused the stall because we took all the fuel away. This is just classic faulty o2 put an o2 in this really i, I got i got it to stall did you you see you saw see the I short saw. term go minus 30 yeah see the long term go minus uh so that's short term here minus 30 and then long term here count down to minus 18 and at that point in time engine stalls right over here this is rpm bottom mm -hmm. right um and it did that because exactly what you said because we took all the fuel away and the reason it this is the reason it did that your upstream O2, this was cold. So in here, this is where we started. Um, over there is when the engine was running and all this period of time is where I was doing a smoke test on the intake. Okay. And I was doing that because I saw a plus 20%. Yeah. Never found your smoke machine. I can't, the ball's got a hole. Well, the, <laughs> the, the ball's got a hole in it that needs to be patched with like a tire patch. It's a squeezy ball. Yeah, it's got a little freaking pinhole in the rubber. So this is normal you know, engine, key on engine off like bias voltage right mm -hmm. um and then we start the car and you're at what 1.8 1 1.9 yeah okay. normal stuff then we start the car and right away um voltage comes down because the heater's working but it never dropped below like 0.6 right there okay at that point in time the computer's now trying you can see what it's doing here right away right from startup it's trying to take fuel away to get that o2 to go below 0.45 and it can't and it does it multiple times you know, up and down where it's mm -hmm. lets it go, pulls it away, lets it go, pulls it away. The whole time that it's doing that confirmed, in my opinion, confirmed lean condition based on the downstream. Look at your downstream yeah. O2. Yeah, point O2. Yeah, I like, mean, it's, yeah, it's very, way. very low voltage. Yep. We don't have an overfueling problem that's causing it to stall. This, and I heard it pop through the intake. This is a faulty upstream O2. Um, it, and I let it go. I never touched the throttle. I let it go multiple times, right? And look at the downstream each time. Upstreams at, at that point in time mm -hmm. is point, where's my digital number? Current. 
Point five eight. Point six, yeah. So um, anything above point four five, we're taking fuel away. That's exactly what you're seeing here. And Minus it's thirty to go down below point four five, and it won't. It won't. And that was right from startup that it did that. Um, and then again, each time you're looking at the downstreams, point zero six right now on the mm -hmm. downstream right there. Point zero six. It's running that lean, That's but it right. doesn't see it over there. Correct. Yeah. Um, oh, and then over here is where I rev the engine to wake that O2 up, right? And then everything was fine after that. After I got it was the, always like a kind of diesel idle type deal. Or, mm -hmm. I don't think like under load. Here's what I think moving. though. I think that that misfire is contaminate has contaminated that O2. Okay. And I moved the number three coil to the number four, uh -huh. and it moved to the number four. So that needs a coil. Yeah, but it also there's carbon tracks I think on the number three plug. So one coil, four plugs upstream o2 okay. and make sure you get a factory o2 for this in particular i've seen issues when they use a bias voltage on the o2 grounds um i have seen issues like this where if you don't use a factory sensor a lot of you're times in trouble when i go into like advanced site it'll say you know a denso you know factory or oe part it'll say it's a man you know, oe manufacturer I mean, yeah i can do that i don't know where they got it from, okay so. so that's what we're doing hopefully we'll have a follow-up for you guys and if we don't i know you guys learned something from this one pay attention to your customers pay attention to the data um and again we taught you guys a little bit about charging for diagnostic time this one was a little tricky as as they are with 200,000 miles and 15 different trouble codes but uh that's what we're doing hopefully we get a follow-up from my, from my brother and we put it right here and if not we thank you for joining us we'll see you next time so we're heading back to danner's to get a follow-up for you guys on this o2 sensor that i called on i don't even remember the car 2011 something Anyway, O2 fixed it. We want a follow-up for you guys. We're just bringing minimal tools and driving the power wagon. Here, check out my horn. Ready? <laughs> I don't see our car. It's all Tanner's fault. I told him I wanted to film it. O2 fixed it. I just wanted to show you guys the drop in that bias voltage was critical. The timing of it. Let's go give Danner some because that's really what this boils down to. Let's give this guy some because it doesn't look like our car's here. Yeah, it just left. Okay, so just real quick, O2 fixed it. Yes, you, it ran great. You started, well, we put a coil in it too, right? Yeah. Was that right. what we did? I don't yeah, even remember. A coil, and, a coil an and an O2. Okay, and then the O2, um, you were able to see it drop down real quick from start up and it moved back and forth and, and no negative it, trims. And it ran, we drove it like three different times doing other things and it never crashed on us. So. Okay, and then you let it sit, started it back up. That was the really yeah, cause, when... Yeah, because the check engine light came on and then Bob was like, I don't know why the light's on. And then for some reason that cat monitor sets fast, like oh. within like a mile and a half. Okay. It already had the converter code. Oh, that's right. It needed a converter that's too. That's why he stopped and mm -hmm. then he, so he got sidetracked on a scanner, put it back on. Okay and saw the cat code and then he cleared it yeah and then um he drove it again for like another five or ten minutes again the light came back on it was the cat code again okay it never fell apart on that. okay Very good good. all right so and what kind of o2 did we put in that i put I, a gm one I, okay it was good actually from it was an ac delta and we don't know you you had mentioned they changed the o2 twice a she thought wow and it because they did it once under warranty and then you know when i looked under like advances site it it said a Denso or yeah. something, and it said the OE is the, you know, Denso is the OE, whatever. And I said, I told my commercial guy, I'm like, you're showing an AC Delco in your world pack line, which is usually you'll get like a brown box, but you open it, it's like a Toyota yeah. part or a yeah. GM part. And it actually said, I probably have it over there. No, it's a big deal. Delco, so. Okay, so maybe lesson there is uh, aftermarket O2s. We've seen this well, before. With one that you were explaining the other day, where it's like taking that v voltage and pulling it up higher to get rid of any kind of hash, and maybe it just wasn't designed to 
kind of work in that range? Yeah, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. Possibly. I, I mean, the when they use the ground bias on that to yeah pull it up off a of noise, I've definitely seen problems, you know, in Chrysler's with that design. But that was more related to the O2 heater and how that that was done. I'll put a link here for you guys for the pulse width modulated heater circuits Chrysler switched to that caused problems. And I go over this in classes too in chapter four and five. So we'll just if you have more questions on that, go there. But uh, okay, so it's fixed. That's good. Sorry guys, didn't get to show it. Uh, Danner's got a shop to run and you know it doesn't revolve around us. So I apologize that we could not show you the after O2. In particular, I was interested in after it sits 15 minutes on a hot soak, start it up, I wanted to see that bias line drop down very, very quickly, and we saw it hanging up there. And uh, just to reiterate why I believed it was an O2 fault without really doing further testing was the fact that the downstream was reporting very, very lean during that particular condition. Fuel trims pulled very far away, and um, we know the heater was working based on how quickly that signal dropped. And um, that's just pretty, pretty standard faulty O2 or incorrect O2 um, reaction on a cold start or, or hot restart, either one. Um, yeah, that's why we didn't do any further stuff and we put an O2 in it and it fixed it. So, end of story, we're done. We drove here in hopes that we could show it and then we figured if not, we'll just, we'll just give this guy a bunch of crap for sending the car, but no big deal. Hey, so. she was on a cruise, man. Every time I'd call her, it would like she'd call back, and I'd hear myself echoing, and it was just like <laughs> I called her on Friday, and she never called. Well, back. she got home and she wanted her car, so that's understandable. So, guys, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.